local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. Well, good morning. Welcome to Ash Wednesday. Ashes. Venture around. Uh, if you're... Uh, if you got ashes early, chances are they're going to get washed off. Oh my goodness! You come yeah. out of church, yeah. Hey, announcement out there: all outdoor swimming has been um, canceled for today. <laughs> well, that's good. It's about time. Yeah. They're always slow. Just wanted to make sure I didn't want to get behind <laughs> on that. Right. If you are planning to do outdoor swimming today in this area, it has been canceled. You can be arrested. Mm. In fact, for doing no, you can't. But, that's good uh, to know. But um, anyway, it's it's cold out there. It is cold out there. It's like uh, thirty three degrees. And uh, depending on where you're at, it could be light snow. Around here, it's a uh, it's a rain mix. And when I say rain mix, there's there's I don't know there, there's something coming mixing with the rain that's you know icy. Well, I would uh, tell you, I'm, I, I live in the old West End, as as most people know at this point. And driving from the old West End to Holland, mm-hmm. uh, Ohio, um, yeah, just right right down the street, uh, um, <laughs> a lot of icy mix. Sleet, in mm, fact, mm, this morning. Mm. I took the puppies out this morning. I got them onto the front porch. They all looked at me and said, no, no, no we're not going to do that because they could hear it. I mean, yeah. sleet was coming down. And, uh, yeah, so that that didn't go well this morning. And then, But then I have to say driving in from uh, Old West End to Holland, pretty clear. I mm-hmm. mean, salt trucks on both sides, oh, right. you know, kind of very busy getting the salt down. Uh, the uh, the speed seemed to be about the same mm-hmm. as what it normally is, maybe a little bit less, but not congested and no one slip sliding. Mm-hmm. So how about That's you good. coming over from? Well, I know that uh, Heather Downs. You know, I, I always get the dog out before before I go and got him to the door. Yeah, and, and he like stuck his snout out and a, and a drop hit him on the nose. And That's it. I'm not going. Oh out. yeah, no, he no. wouldn't go out. Period. He had already talked to my dogs. Yeah, that's or he, so, he or yeah. he talked to mine after he he had that experience because they literally would not come out from under the roof of the uh, of the porch. Yeah. So <laughs> they're still there, as far yeah. as I know. I just Probably left them so. there. Thought, Probably well, so. do whatever you want then. So oh, it, right. it is it's light it's light light rain and freezing rain in the mix. But I, I have you know we have a, a very astute. Morning show producer, yeah, uh, Tim, yeah, and I'm, I've been called a lot. Uh, I mean, it's stuute. I, I never been called astute. That you're astute, yes, yes. <laughs> and you're also a top notch researcher, yes. So I'd like to set you on a research assignment, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Uh, I'd like you to find out for for us and for our listeners' benefit, yeah, the difference between freezing rain, sleet, and grapple. Do freezing we have grapple, rain. or or do we have sleet, or do we have? Freezing I thought grapple rain? was what we were going for when we did Hump Day humor. Uh, no, it's grapple. How do you spell <laughs> grapples? G a g r a p p e l. I think it's g r o p p e l. Yeah, and this guy okay, that's, that's been in grapple. weather for yeah, yeah grapple. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, there, but yeah, I'm uh, a few hours shy of my meteorological degree. So. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> don't take a few hours on this. But I know you can no. find the answer because you I know, can find out the answer. That's uh, that's what we that's what I do here. You, you, <laughs> producer you dig Tim. like a dog. So there you go. And uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that when we're telling people what it's doing outside. I'm using the proper terms. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> producer Tim made his way from Fremont, and mm-hmm. so I wanted to kind of get an, an update from him on how the traffic, how the road conditions were from Fremont to Holland uh, today. Uh, there was some heavy rain. Some heavy rain. Uh, rain, not down. sleet. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it began as uh, I would call sleet yeah. in Fremont. Then it went to rain, and then uh, you know, and I went on the and, and you know checked out the ground out outside our studios. It's like wow, that's really frozen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it it's uh, it depends on where you are in our listening area, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean that rain was so heavy at times it it was uh, very hard to see. Visibility wow. was very hard. Oh my goodness! Wow. I thought grapple was grape uh, um, grape what do you call it? popsicle. Mixed with M and M's. See, this is why I put our crack researcher on the. Are case, you sure that's Dave. not it? <laughs> I'll look for that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give good. me the name of that because I'm pretty sure that's grapple. <laughs> but it's uh, rain, sleet, then showers today. That's the official forecast. A high about forty, and then tonight showers with a chance of showers. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, showers then a chance of showers. 
Uh, so, I, but it's going to be like a hundred percent, and then it'll drop down to forty percent. So it's a maybe situation later, but a pretty sure thing be earlier tonight. Yeah, the rest of the day is so showing hundred percent. Like yeah, we're going to yeah. get precipitation, right? And then a slight chance of rain and some breeze on Thursday. Sixty for a high, and then we're going down to twenty-two Thursday night. Oh my goodness! Yeah, twenty-nine on Friday, thirty-nine on Saturday, forty-five on Sunday. Hey, I'm happy to report on this Wednesday morning. Uh, that the head cold that I had been uh, struggling with is virtually gone. Like I oh, have no, nothing left from it whatsoever. So I'll welcome the 60 degree uh, day tomorrow mm. and then drop down to 22. And then I'll start the whole thing all over That's again. Right, yeah. you know, it's like, come on. Which which one it is. It come used to on, be, uh, make up your mind. This used to be March weather. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, it's 34 now, but with the wind chill, because the wind is, uh, you know, like 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Feels 10 degrees cooler than that. Wow, a whole 10 degrees. Yeah. So there's a pretty good breeze. But hey, you know, uh, James B. Uh, Madison, James B. Madison, who invented uh, the wind chill factor, passed away uh, not too long ago. 84 years old, but he felt like he was 68. I know I told that last week. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's just worth saving and resurrecting. And I changed the name because I couldn't remember the name that I used before. Not an, not an actual person. So there you go. I love it, though. That's just funny. in case you missed it. <laughs> Accuracy, schmaccuracy. Yeah, there you go. And <laughs> yeah, what's the matter? What's in a name? Yeah, that's right. That's right. The only we're, the only place we look for real accuracy, we don't even look for it in the meteorologist anymore, but we do look for it in our news people. Good morning, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning in the WTOL 11 newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. Toledo City Council has approved its 2023 operating budget. The city is spending more than $917 million, which includes more than $5.5 million on parks and recreation, $89 million on police, and nearly $77 million on fire and rescue. A look at the 2022 financial results for Stellantis. The company released its profit-sharing payments for UAW employees yesterday. Nearly $15,000 will be paid out next month to more than 40,000 workers. The company says the contribution from the workforce led to a strong second half of last year. The next time you cast a vote in the Buckeye State, things will be a bit different. The Lucas County Board of Elections has released the voter changes starting this year. It includes having a driver's license, state ID, or social security card in order to vote in person. A 1977 St. Francis High School alum is nominated for an Oscar. Dr. Sean Carroll is an executive producer on the movie All That Breathes, which is up for Best Documentary Feature. It's about two brothers from Delhi, India, who nurse sick birds back to health. Carroll, in the past, has won two Emmys and a Peabody Award for his previous works. President Biden is in Poland holding meetings with the leaders of countries that border Russia. Yesterday, he delivered a speech in Warsaw promising support for Ukraine nearly a year after Russia invaded the country. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the West is to blame for the war and said he was pulling Russia out of the last remaining nuclear arms treaty with the U.S. However, the Kremlin later said Moscow will abide by the terms of the agreement. An investigation is underway into a freight train derailment in Nebraska. No one was hurt yesterday when about 31 cars carrying coal ran off the tracks. Now this comes as the Environmental Protection Agency has taken charge of the cleanup following a toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. President Biden got an update yesterday from Ohio lawmakers and the EPA. Today, former President Donald Trump is expected to visit. Home Depot says it's raising its starting pay to $15 an hour beginning this month. It's part of the home improvement chain's $1 billion investment in workers across more than 2,000 stores here in the U.S. and Canada. Home Depot's CEO says the pay hike will help the company attract and retain the best talent. A suspected tornado hit central New Jersey yesterday afternoon, leaving behind downed trees and damaged homes. Residents say they saw a funnel cloud and then sought shelter. Tornado warnings like those issued yesterday in New Jersey are rare in that state. From the WTOL 11 Weather Center, rain and freezing rain expected this morning, then a wintry mix for the remainder of the day. Temperatures around freezing in the Toledo area, warmer further south and, of course, colder into Michigan. Heavy rain and maybe a rumble of thunder overnight. Windy tomorrow with highs in the mid-50s. In the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio, 
I'm Wendy Sheridan. Thank you, Wendy. I am going to listen particularly for a rumble of thunder tonight. Mm, a rumble. Just one rumble. That's all we need. Ah, man, it, it mm-hmm. reminds me of like happy days, you know, or something. <laughs> Going to yeah, get into right. a rumble. <laughs> Be careful out there. 30, 33 degrees right now. And we sent uh, producer Tim on a mission uh, to determine uh, this mix of precipitation, the difference between freezing rain, sleet, and grapple. And I, I, do you have a report for us, Tim? Yes, I did. Uh, yes, I do. No uh, new sounder? Okay. Well, <laughs> Grapple. Oh, I, he was the official. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Grapple, and you spelled it correctly, G-R-A-U-P-E-L. Oh, no, I, didn't. In... I, I left out the A. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, think there was an O in your spelling. To yeah, be honest. I think it was an O. <laughs> actual, actual, so I take that back. That's okay. uh, an actual it is actually an interesting mix of snow crystals in ice. Should not be confused with sleet, which is sturdier and more, more frozen. Grapple occurs when a snow pellet falls and is encapsul- encapsulated by ice. Mm. Hmm. Let me be clear. No M&Ms? No, no M&Ms. What in the those? world? Yeah, I, yeah. I, My brother Vincent. <laughs> My goodness. You, you can imagine the kids coming out there with M&Ms. <laughs> You're grabbing all of them up. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sleet and freezing rain uh, curse snowflakes melt into a raindrop and a wedge of warm air. So basically, it comes cold, warm, cold for sleep, freezing rain, then falls in contact with the ground. And because the ground is cold, that's freezing rain. So it may so not be freezing until it hits the ground. Yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, see, I've good. learned something. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah. Was, that, that and was... because of the music, I had to shorten up my explanation. But that was most Condense. excellent. It was good, yeah. <laughs> I want to circle back around. I didn't mean to say happy days. I meant to say welcome back, Cotter. Remember that show? There was always like gang activity. John Travolta getting involved in gangs and stuff. And, and welcome back up. Mr. Cotter would come out and break it all up. So no rumbling. Uh, and welcome back, Cotter land. Okay. He well, controlled the situation. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Dave. Yeah. People are talking about Annunciation Radio. It's refreshing. It's calming. I listen to it every day, all day long, and in my car. It's got the good news. I appreciate Annunciation Radio. Annunciation Radio. Faith with frequency. During this diocesan year of the National Eucharistic Revival, join us for a worshipful evening of prayer and Eucharistic adoration to enhance our understanding of, love for, and living out of the Holy Eucharist. The events run from Sunday, January 19th, to Sunday, April 30th. Each event is from 3 o'clock to 4.30 p.m. To learn more, visit ToledoDiocese.org backslash Eucharist. That's ToledoDiocese.org backslash Eucharist. Annunciation Radio would like to thank Mesic Custom Builders for providing underwriting support. For more than 25 years, Mesic Custom Builders has been offering custom home construction and renovation services throughout Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. You may reach Mesic Custom Builders at 419-861-7773, online at masiccustombuilders.com. That's M-A-C-E-K custombuilders.com. This is Dr. Henry Russell, St. Augustine's HEP. Michigan's original and authentic Catholic classical liberal arts program, helping families educate for over 17 years. Catholic classical liberal arts education teaches how everything that is true fits into a clear image of God's universe and how he wants us to live in it. The wisdom of Christendom leads students to an integrity of intellect, holiness, morality, and emotion. From grades 1 through 12, Meeting one to three days a week, St. Augustine's provides the backbone of true education. Spaces are open at our temperance site at St. Anthony of Padua Parish, as well as Ann Arbor and South Lyon. To learn more, visit staugustineshep.org or call 734-276-5629. Catholic Radio for the Diocese of Toledo. This is Annunciation Radio, WNOC Bowling Green Toledo, WHRQ Sandusky, WRRO Eden Bryant, WFOT Lexington Mansfield, and WSHB Willard. Local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. 
And good morning. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave, the Wednesday version. Wednesday version means we will have the one, the only, Deacon Dan Brayer. In about uh, 50 minutes, he'll be joining us with his thoughts on our word for today. In addition to that, we'll have Heroes of the Faith. I bet you didn't know that. I know I didn't. My own reflection on uh, the word for today. Wendy Sheridan coming back around with some news and then some real wasted time about that. At about uh, 8, uh, 20, we throw something in there that... Uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, we don't understand why you don't just avoid it altogether. But the rest of the show is going to be there. You know, with Hump Day Humor, there's always a couple of gems at least. Yeah. So it's worth going through the chaff to get to the wheat. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like going through the junkyard to find that one good piece of uh, yeah, that's one, right. that's one right. good piece of automotive equipment. Yeah, we're kind that of that one good headlight for the American pickers of uh, of uh, Hump Day Humor. There you go. There Stay you go. with us, and it'll be exciting. That's right, that's right. <laughs> uh, we're also going to be chatting uh, with uh, Joe Condit today. Oh yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. Big big uh, men's oh, conference man. in Cincinnati. Big big speakers this year. My yeah, goodness, say. but there uh, it's always a wonderful event, and I know that some. Some of the men from this area make it down, as do mm-hmm. men from uh, not only from Ohio, but from various parts of the country, and uh, always a good showing uh, regarding the audience size mm-hmm. for the men's conference there in Cincinnati. So can't wait it's can't wait be. to talk to Joe to find out what's going on this year. Yeah, it'll be a huge year. Today, of course, is Ash Wednesday. It's also the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter the mm. Apostle, uh, and obviously we don't celebrate a chair, right? It's right. not a piece of furniture. It's the uh, symbol of the Shepherd of the Universal Church and the authority of the universal bishop. So uh, wonderful reasons to celebrate today and to reflect as well. Yeah, Catholic News Agency today carrying uh, some comments by Pope Francis from yesterday. Uh, that No, no, I'm sorry, from today. Hmm. Um, he made them, of course, uh, they're six hours ahead uh, there in Rome, and so he made these comments today. Uh, Pope Francis said today that the traditions of the church should not be based on opinion, or ideological leanings, but on whether they favor the proclamation of the gospel. Everything in the church must be conformed to the the requirements of the proclamation of the gospel, not to the opinions of the conservatives or the progressives, but to the fact that Jesus reaches people's lives. Hmm. Again, he said this earlier today. Francis asked, when there are ideological divisions in the church, such as an identification as conservative or progressive, where is the Holy Spirit? Be careful, he warned. The gospel is not an idea. The gospel is not an ideology. The gospel is a proclamation that touches the heart and makes the heart change. You are making the gospel a political party, an ideology, a club. You know, and hmm. you could, I know how things fall and, and people get their, get all raised up on this thing or that thing. But understand, we're 2,000 years old. And if you look back through the history of our church, there has been a uh, a walking away from the church uh, on both sides of uh, what is absolutely authentic. Some have walked away because they disagree and they are more progressive, or if you want to say more liberal. Others have walked away because they're more conservative and um, they don't agree that they want the church to be more conservative, want them to be more traditional. You know what? In both sides, it's disobedience. <laughs> so mm. there's a there's a great uh, there's a great um, reminder here that the only thing that matters at the end of the day is obedience. What does the Lord say? To obey is better than sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Obey. Obedience is the number one thing. We see uh, the, We see great examples of this throughout the history of the church, including the authentic reformers who went through great difficulty to reform our church. St. John Bosco, St. Francis, of, of, uh, Francis of Assisi, St. Francis de Sales, uh, St. Benedict, when he's uh, reforming the monasteries, all of that. But all of them go through di- great difficulty. And in the midst of challenge and of those persecutions that come along with authentic reform, they stayed obedient. Others did not. Martin Luther decided that he was not going to remain obedient in the midst of his desire to reform. And his disobedience led to great destruction, as we see. And that destruction continues. And so we can think that we're right, but honestly, the only safe harbor is obedience. Mm. That's it. Well, there that's isn't any point. other safe harbor except to obey uh, the church that Jesus founded on the Apostle Peter and promised that the gates of hell would not prevail against her. I will tell you this. If you're outside the church, you put yourself in a, in a less safe place. And if you think you're outside the church with 12 other people or 180 other people and everybody else in the church is wrong, uh 
wake up. You're yeah, you're yeah. the one who's outside the church. Stop doing that. Yeah, Be amen. obedient to the church, and we will find a safe passage home. It doesn't mean. Look, there are so many authentic expressions in the church. The church is so broad that she gives us a, a safe place and a and a, one, a place where we can. Um, worship the Lord and be a, a part of the authentic Catholic Church in so very many expressions. And what happens is we sometimes think our expression is better than the other. You know, the Charismatics are better than the Marians. The Marians are better mm-hmm. than. Stop all that. They're the Franciscans better than the Dominicans. However, you want to cut up that pie. Mm-hmm. As long as you are a member of the authentic Catholic Church under the headship of our Holy Father in union with the with the rest of our bishops then you're in a safe place. If you're outside that, not so much. Mm-hmm. So just be careful. That's all. That's such a good point. It's it's e- <laughs> it's easy, but it's it's so easy it's difficult mm-hmm. because we, we long to be right, and we long to be right over someone else. Yeah. Well, you can be right, and the other person can be right as long as all of those things exist in this broad mantle that is the church that holds the promise. Mm. Promise here. Here, let me break it down. Promise for those in the church. Uh, no promise for those outside the church. But it's mm-hmm. that easy. Mm-hmm. You know, no. uh, the church, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Yeah. Period. End of this end of sentence, end of paragraph, end of story. And so there is, you know, that it's a safe harbor. Hold, you know, stand on the promise. It's, it's, I'm glad you, you mentioned all that because as we enter Lent, uh, 40 days of reflection, we, can, we should look inward, look at ourselves, and this is a great time to kind of examine our own. Yeah. Attitudes and, and thoughts and hey man, and know. when I get into this kind of area, I notice that look, there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Does that mean people outside the Catholic Church cannot be saved? No, it means there is no salvation outside, outside the, the Catholic, Catholic Church. Church right? There is an authentic expression, even with those who are in bodies who are separated from the Church. The only truth that exists is the truth that they share with the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. That's it, and so salvation only comes. As uh, through the Catholic Church, that's that's the that's the promise. That's what's given, and uh, but that doesn't mean that it's limited to those who are members only. Mm-hmm, it means right. there is no salvation outside the authentic truth, the protected truth that has been given and and uh, honored and protected over these two thousand years through the Church that Jesus founded on the Apostle Peter. Very good. Remain you, remain under her care. Yeah. It's the best place to be. And if uh, if you're dancing uh, on the edges, uh, jump back in. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. Always an invitation there and always an opportunity as well. And condemnation from us and judgment on no one. We want, as the Father said, he wants all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's, that's what we want for everyone. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Uh, some... Uh, a mix of freezing rain, I think is what it is, that's coming mm-hmm. down with the rain, and in some cases the snow. So you could have th- uh, two, three things happening up there by the be time it hits careful. the ground. So, yeah, just be careful up there. I know uh, the further north you go, the uh, the more snow you'll get, uh, which is pretty obvious, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that might know, be a pretty common It is happening thing. in, in yeah. our listening area, so be careful out there. And uh, now it's time for us to pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, the reparation for sin, and the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for the intentions of our bishops, and of the apostles of prayer, and in particular for those recommended by our Holy Father this month. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Eileen. We continue our prayers. We encourage and invite you to join Annunciation Radio, Parents of Priests, and Sarah Club Toledo Chapter as we together pray for our clergy and religious. We pray for vocations and for an increase of faith so as to become a more holy diocese of Toledo. And today we pray for religious brothers and sisters. Dear Lord, we pray that the Blessed Mother wrap her mantle around your priest to follow her own words. Do whatever he tells you. May your priest have the heart of St. Joseph, Mary's most chaste spouse. May the Blessed Mother's own pierced heart inspire them to embrace all who suffer at the foot of the cross. 
May your priests be holy, filled with the fire of your love, seeking nothing but your greater glory and the salvation of souls. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our word for today on this Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday, February the 22nd, our word, words for today, return to me. Return to me, our words for today. Our first reading, and we have two readings today, our first reading is from the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast, let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 51, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness and the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. For I acknowledge my offense and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Our gospel acclamation is uh, from Psalm 95. Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms... Do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in synagogues and on street corners, so that others might see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. Mm. Return to me our word for today. Our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel reading 
Uh, DC shared on Ash Wednesday of uh, March 2019, uh, March 6, 2019. On this Lenten journey, back to what is essential, the gospel proposes three steps which the Lord invites us to undertake without hypocrisy and pretense. Almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. Almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. What are they for? Prayer unites us to God, charity to our neighbor, fasting to ourselves. Lent, therefore, invites us to focus, first of all, on the Almighty in prayer, which frees us from that horizontal and mundane life where we find time for self but forget God. It then invites us to focus on others, with the charity that frees us from the vanity of acquiring and of thinking that things are only good if they are good for me. Finally, Lent invites us to look inside our heart with fasting, which frees us from the attachment to things and from the worldliness that numbs the heart. Prayer, charity, fasting. Three investments for a treasure that endures. Prayer, charity, and fasting. Three investments for a treasure that endures. Again, our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel readings that he shared on Ash Wednesday in 2019. Return to me our words for today taken from our first reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. And so that's where we go right now to the Lord as we begin our Lenten journey, this time of penance, this time of coming before the Lord, not only for our own spiritual benefit, but for the spiritual benefit of our parish, of our diocese, of our state, of our country, of our world, of everyone in the world. And that is our approach and should be our approach every Lent. Uh, yes, that it is a, a personal benefit to us from a, from a, a spiritual perspective in our relationship with the Lord, but that our concern is not only for ourselves, our concern from a spiritual perspective, again, is for the entire world, that we might live out, again, as I said earlier, St. Paul's uh, thoughts regarding the Father when he said that the Father desires that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So Lent is letting that really come into our own hearts and minds. When the Lord says, return to me, he's speaking to us individually, of course, but he's asking that we return to him, that we might truly be vessels for his use, that others might return to him as well. So Lent, if we could go into Lent with this idea that this could be the beginning of the great revival, (laughs) you know, Uh, in, in ourselves, in our families, in our parish community, and beyond, even to the whole world. And yes, we are called uh, to speak. We're called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ as we have encounters that allow us to do that. But we also understand that there is great power and great strength in our communication with God, in our willingness to sacrifice so that Uh, we can be brought closer to him so that we can hear more clearly so that we can look and act more like him. And in that, not only are we moving toward salvation ourselves, but we have to believe that he's going to use us, not maybe in person, but our prayers to move and change the hearts of so many others. Are we really convinced? Are we absolutely convinced in our own hearts and minds, that the that God the Father's desire, that his absolute desire, clearly explained, is that all are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. First and foremost, are we absolutely convinced that he wants our salvation, that he wants us to be with him for all of eternity, and he has given everything that's necessary to make that happen, including, and most significantly, Uh, sending his own son into the world to die for us so that that grace could be purchased at such a high price that gives us the ability to move that forward. But that it's not only us, brothers and sisters, 
that he wants salvation for all. Do we truly want salvation for all? In that way, are we putting on the mind of Christ, the mind of the Father, the mind of the Holy Spirit? Are we putting on the mind of God that our concern is truly for the salvation of all? Not only our concern, but our greatest desire is my greatest desire in this world, my own salvation and the salvation of everyone else. Everyone else. God the Father didn't leave anybody out. His desire is that all are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I believe, brothers and sisters, if we, as a as a collection of believers, particularly all of us in the Catholic Church going through this time of Lent, will give ourselves over to those sacrifices, will give ourselves over to that time of prayer, will give ourselves over to that spirit of repentance, we will see a wave of conversion happening all over our world. We're seeing a movement of the Spirit both inside and outside of the Catholic Church right now. Within the body of Christ, we are seeing these graces that are so uh, significant right now, showing up in all kinds of unexpected places, in all kinds of unexpected ways. Let us participate with that during this Lenten season. Let us give thanks for every conversion, no matter where it starts, no matter where it starts from. Let us give thanks for every conversion as people enter into this relationship with God, which is his desire that all are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And let us play our part. Let us be uh, faithful to what the Lord is calling us to. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. Father, let it be so that you would relent and leave behind a blessing, and that through that we might be a blessing to so many others. Return to me, our word for today. Mm. A clean heart create. Mm. On the 51st readings. Psalm. Uh, you know, and I think, <clears throat> you know, you had, 51st Psalm is so significant because mm. it's King David. is It's him uh, you know, unveiling his heart of repentance after he's caught in the act of adultery, the act of murder, in fact, and he's busted. Mm. But he he shows his heart in saying, you know, I can't do it without you, Lord. I mm. want you. This is who I am. This is, uh, unfortunately, the best I can do on my own. I need you back. Mm. And would you please take me back? And when you read the 51st Psalm, understanding where David is at that point, mm. there's, I promise you, there's no one on the earth who can't read that Psalm and go, well, he definitely was at least as bad as me, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, and, uh, and yet the Lord, the Lord took him back and blessed him in so many ways and continued to minister to him as he repented. And and that's what we're all called to do. Mm. He's reading so perfect for the beginning of, of this Lenten season. Amen. Mm. It wow. could be, look, we have the greatest opportunity for the shifting of everything in our world is not a, a meeting between Putin and Biden. It's not China mm. and us becoming more friendly. It's the people of God rising up in prayer, repenting, and following with faithfulness the Lord God. Mm. That will change the trajectory of everything. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, we'll see. But we know (laughs) what happens when the people of God repent and return to the Lord. That's for sure. Great reflection there, Dave. Good uh, choice on Word of the Day. Deacon Dan Breyer will be joining us to uh, offer his reflection. I'm looking forward to that in it's about a half an hour. Fabulous, yeah. And uh, we've also got, uh, of course, the, the the high standard of the Word of the Day and then the high standard of Wendy, our news. And then we drop all of that and we do hump day humor. Yeah. So that's like coming up soon. A little purgatory. <laughs> Here's Wendy. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning in the WTOL 11 newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. Toledo City Council has approved its 2023 operating budget. The city is spending more than $917 million, which includes more than $5.5 million on parks and recreation, $89 million on police, and nearly $77 million on fire and rescue. A look at the 2022 financial results for Stellantis. The company released its profit-sharing payments for UAW employees yesterday. 
Nearly $15,000 will be paid out next month to more than 40,000 workers. The company says the contribution from the workforce led to a strong second half of last year. The next time you cast a vote in the Buckeye State, things will be a bit different. The Lucas County Board of Elections has released the voter changes starting this year. It includes having a driver's license, state ID, or social security card in order to vote in person. A 1977 St. Francis High School alum is nominated for an Oscar. Dr. Sean Carroll is an executive producer on the movie All That Breathes, which is up for Best Documentary Feature. It's about two brothers from Delhi, India, who nurse sick birds back to health. Carroll, in the past, has won two Emmys and a Peabody Award for his previous works. President Biden is in Poland holding meetings with the leaders of countries that border Russia. Yesterday, he delivered a speech in Warsaw promising support for Ukraine nearly a year after Russia invaded the country. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the West is to blame for the war and said he was pulling Russia out of the last remaining nuclear arms treaty with the U.S. However, the Kremlin later said Moscow will abide by the terms of the agreement. An investigation is underway into a freight train derailment in Nebraska. No one was hurt yesterday when about 31 cars carrying coal ran off the tracks. Now this comes as the Environmental Protection Agency has taken charge of the cleanup following a toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. President Biden got an update yesterday from Ohio lawmakers and the EPA. Today, former President Donald Trump is expected to visit. Home Depot says it's raising its starting pay to $15 an hour beginning this month. It's part of the home improvement chain's $1 billion investment in workers across more than 2,000 stores here in the U.S. and Canada. Home Depot's CEO says the pay hike will help the company attract and retain the best talent. A suspected tornado hit central New Jersey yesterday afternoon, leaving behind downed trees and damaged homes. Residents say they saw a funnel cloud and then sought shelter. Tornado warnings like those issued yesterday in New Jersey are rare in that state. From the WTOL 11 Weather Center, rain and freezing rain expected this morning, then a wintry mix for the remainder of the day. Temperatures around freezing in the Toledo area, warmer further south and, of course, colder into Michigan. Heavy rain and maybe a rumble of thunder overnight. Windy tomorrow with highs in the mid-50s. In the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. Let's get ready to rumble. You know, I always wonder when Wendy says it's going to be windy, is that a, a true forecast or is that her just trying to get the name and her name into the thing? It <laughs> could be, could be. Have you ever heard <laughs> have you ever heard the one about the jump rope? The jump rope. Yeah, have you ever heard no. the one about the jump No. That's okay, we'll skip it. Uh, how about this? <laughs> have you heard the one about the bed? Have you heard the one about the bed? No. Nah, it hasn't been made up yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> At a party, a young wife admonished her husband. That's the fourth time you've gone back for ice cream and cake. Doesn't it embarrass you? Why should it answer the spouse? I keep telling them it's for you. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, I got an Ash Wednesday joke for you. Oh, good. On Ash Wednesday, I will be giving up spreadsheets for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. It's going to be a completely excellent. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A <laughs> uh, man in a hot air balloon Yeah. realizes he's lost. He reduced uh, altitude, spotted a woman below. He descended a bit more and shouted, excuse me, can you help me? I promised a friend I would meet him an hour ago, but I don't know where I am. The woman replied, you're in a hot air balloon hovering approximately 30 feet above the ground. You're between 40 and 41 degrees north latitude and between 59 and 60 degrees west longitude. Mm -mm. You must be a programmer, said the balloonist. She said, I am. How did you know? Well, answered the balloonist, everything you told me is technically correct, but I have no idea what to make of your information. And the fact is, I'm still lost. Frankly, you've not been much help so far. The woman responded, you must be a manager. I am, said the balloonist. How did you know? Well, said the woman, you don't know where you are or where you're going. You have to, you've risen um, to where you are due to a large quantity of air. Yeah. Uh, you made a promise, which you have no idea how to keep, and you expect me to solve your problem. The fact is you're exactly in the same position you were in before we met, but now somehow it's my fault. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. All right, Tim, you got one for us. Yes. Uh, my wife says I talk in my sleep, but I don't believe her. Nobody at work has mentioned it before. (laughs) (laughs) This one was on the sign of a comfort inn. Not in this area, but comfort inn. Now pet friendly, except for bears. 
We're not making that mistake again. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's I like pretty that. good. I like that. All right, here are a couple of lent ones. I didn't want to observe the period from Ash Wednesday to Easter again, but I did so to stop my wife's constant nagging. I relented. Ah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. A man took his young son to a baseball game. While they were sitting there, he asked the boy what he was going to give up for Lent. The boy replied, I don't know, Dad. What are you going to give up? His father said, I've thought about this a lot, and I've decided I'm going to give up liquor. Later in the game, the beer man came by, and the man ordered a beer. His son objected. Hey, I thought you were giving up liquor. His dad answered, hard liquor, son. I'm giving up hard liquor. This is just a beer. The, re- the boy replied, well, then, I'm giving up hard candy. <laughs> That's good. Why can't muggers catch Catholics during Lent? I don't know. Why I... can't muggers catch... This is the takeaway one here. <laughs> why can't muggers catch uh, Catholics during Lent? I, why can't muggers catch Catholics uh, during Lent? I don't know. They fast. Ooh, they fast. <laughs> they fast. <laughs> they fast, baby. They fast. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love Very it. good. I like, I like the uh, I like the Lenten <laughs> yeah. humor. Oh, yeah. So a husband and wife, they go to a counselor after 15 years of marriage. Yeah, kind of rocky times. Counselor asks them what the problem is, and the wife goes into a tirade. She lists every problem they've ever had in the 15 years they've been married. She goes on and on and on. Finally, the counselor gets up, goes around the desk, embraces the woman, and kisses her passionately. Mm. The woman shuts up and sits quietly in a daze. The counselor turns to the husband and says, that is what your wife needs at least three times a week. Can you do that? Mm. And the husband says, well, I can bring her in on Monday and Wednesday, but Friday I play golf. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. And that, that's funny. That's funny. I got one more. And this is, this is not Lent, but cop said, anything in the car I should know about? The driver said, <laughs> sorry. Mm-hmm. Anything in the car I should know about? The driver said, nah, just stuff you shouldn't know about. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if Johnny buys 17 donuts every Monday, eats 12 every Wednesday, what's Johnny left with at the end of the year? I don't know. Diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> this is Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. Join me each week on Annunciation Radio for Faith Alive as we highlight the many ministries and services Catholic Charities provides. Tuesday at 4 p.m. and Saturdays at 3 p.m. on Annunciation Radio. Hi, this is Father Nathan Cromley, the founder and president of the St. John Institute. I'm so excited about what's going on. We have an opportunity today to form young people with the savvy of doing great business, while at the same time the devotion of living great lives of faith. At the St. John Institute, we take young people who want to live an exceptional life and do something with meaning for the rest of their life, and we empower them with a deep personal formation to integrate faith, business, prayer, community life, and culture. At the St. John Institute, we'll be giving out graduates who want to work opening new ministries for the church or bringing life to existing ministries. Learn more at stjohninstitute.org. That's S-A-I-N-T John Institute dot O-R-G. Have you ever wondered how to better understand the scriptures? What does the Bible say to us in our day-to-day life? This is Peter Sibelio, the Bible teacher at Lord's University, and I'm happy to answer your Bible questions here on Annunciation Radio. Listen for Bible Basics, a daily feature to help you understand Scripture and how to apply it to daily life. Email your questions to me at feedback at annunciationradio.com and listen for my answers to your inquiries. Underwriting provided by Rieger's Church Supplies and Religious Gifts, 4100 Secor Road, Toledo. Gifts and keepsakes for First Communion, Confirmation, and other occasions are available at Rieger's, 419-474-4740, online at Rieger's.com. Welcome back. It's Morning Offering with Ron and Dave. Glad you are along with us on Ash Wednesday. Thanks for being here. We appreciate that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What what a wonderful show so far. What a wonderful day so far. Weather not so great. But we have a fantastic guest uh, with us coming up right now. Going to talk about a a, a, uh, historic event that continues in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
the National Ken Catholic Men's Conference in Cincinnati, the U.S. Uh, oldest men's conference. Yeah. Welcome, Joe Condit. Can't wait to hear about the lineup for this year. Ron and Dave, thanks for having me. Blessed uh, Ash Wednesday to you both. Thank you to you as well. And I, I want to say Joe is the producer, director, and chairman of the National Men's Conference. He does it all. I mean, that's amazing. Congratulations, Joe. Uh, yeah, but hey, the good Lord, the good Lord works through fools, and I'm lucky to be one of them. I guess uh, you know it's really His work, but we got a great team, and you no, know, we're really excited. You know, I, we're right down the street from you all in Toledo and Northern Ohio, and we're attracting men from all over the country to this thing. We got Jonathan Rumi from the Chosen. Apparently, his show has been downloaded a billion times or something wow. at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's our headline speaker, and we're also making history because the uh, His Royal Highness, the Archduke of Austria. Christian Habsburg is speaking for the first time ever at young age, 68 years old in the wow. United States. Wow. This will be his first talk. Mm. And then I, I see Father Robert Spitzer as well. And then I know we have a, a Toledo uh, native who's going to be there. Uh, the Bishop Bishop Fernandez is going to be one of the speakers as well. And so I know a whole lot of people from Toledo are going to come down to hear him as well. Yeah, it just keeps getting better and better. The, both uh, the Archbishop of Cincinnati... Uh, Bishop Fernandez, who, in my humble opinion, is one of the best clergy speakers you can hear today. That he's just incredible. If you ever get, gotten a chance to hear him, and then we had a couple of add-ons. We have NFL players coming to do a uh, a um, question and answer session, wow. and we just added the pro-life Spider-Man. So let me drop that. Anyone pro-life listening? Pro-life Spider-Man. <laughs> Google pro-life Spider-Man. He's coming to give his testimony. This kid climbed skyscrapers, climbed skyscraper buildings in Chicago, Manhattan. No rope, just walks up in his t-shirt and shoes and does it in the name of to raise awareness for pro-life movement. It's wow. incredible. That's awesome. The last, the last one he did was a building in, at the Super Bowl in Phoenix, the Chase building. I think it's 70 stories high or something. Hmm. Wow. And you've got the Archduke of Austria first yes, speaking yes. at this event. First time he speaking is, in the U.S. That's crazy. He is, and this is very important. He is the grandson of Blessed Carl, a direct mm. descendant. And rumor has it they're Henry brothers, Lorenzo Henry and David Henry, or movie stars themselves, may be making a movie about his grandfather, Blessed Carl, which some are saying might be the next Braveheart. So we are really mm. going to be making history and lucky that this, this whole event, the National Men's Conference, is happening in Cincinnati. You can get tickets and information at nationalmensconference.com. Everything you need, I encourage every woman to buy a ticket and invest in their man and get them to get there. And you get all this. I mean, I think it's it's pretty amazing. Uh, first of all, again, uh, it's uh, Saturday, March twenty fifth, at the Cinta Center in Cincinnati. Uh, tickets are only ten dollars. Uh, ten dollars virtual, yes, sir. For the virtual, and then uh, you can you can uh, actually. I mean, a lot of times um, we have busloads going from Toledo to Cincinnati for this event. I would imagine we, there are probably a couple of them uh, going from here uh, already. So if people want to get involved. Uh, as you say, give us that information again so people can get signed up and actually be there in person. Yes, we're encouraging everybody to get there in person. and Nothing beats that. Nationalmensconference.com. You can tune in virtually as well. We're having tickets bought all the way from Phoenix to Boston, and then virtual tickets been bought in Australia. So we're literally global. Wow. And is this a one-day event, Joe, or is it go through the weekend? One-day event. Okay. It's we're making it like, uh, I hate to say it this, but we're making it more like an Instagram TikTok style where it's going to be a day that goes by so fast and so enjoyable, you know, to appeal to the young folks. And uh, we're packing it in. It's going to be more like a theater than just a, a standard conference. There's going to be so many incredible guests and big time Catholic Christian influencers to come and share their testimony and hopefully make men and grow them in Christ. That's but, awesome. And, and really, men need to support each other in, in their faith and there's nothing better than coming together, especially with a large group like this, uh, to really kind of get together with other men and really build up your faith. I can't agree more. That's my passion. I, I want to bring good men together. There's never been a time in the times that we live than ever than men to come together. And we have to. And when we come together, the good Lord takes it from there. You know, so many, we've seen so many miracles from this event already. A baby's been saved. A father-son duo's com- converted to the Catholic faith. Uh, just so many stories. You know, a kid not, checked himself into this wonderful institution in Cincinnati called Rural Woods from committing suicide. I mean, it, I, I got thousands or hundreds of stories like this that have come over the years. It's, it's just a, it's very remarkable. 
Well, nothing better or not much better a man can do than to honor his mother. And doggone it if you don't pick the Feast of the Annunciation to have this one-day conference. So wonderful opportunities, I'm sure, throughout the day to honor Our Lady as well. I could not have said that better. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's only 10,500 seats in the arena, so you better you better get your space reserved. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try and shove guys in, right? But you're right. You have the same arena where the Xavier Musketeers play basketball. It's on the Catholic University of Xavier's campus. They're excited to be hosting it. It's part of their mission. You know, it's just, the whole thing is just coming together. It's, uh, you know, God's grace and his will that men will come be moved and what what a great opportunity for a father and a son to at least have one time a year to bond with each other, you know. And then I'm hoping all the leaders of the other men's conferences, who, by the way, were inspired by Cincinnati, come bring the men that attend their hometown conferences and, and uh, you know, come and enjoy the day, meet each other. I Nothing more I'd like than the guy from Texas that puts on the Catholic men's event there meets the guy from Delaware that does it, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, we are trying to make this the Super Bowl of them all, where back in the 90s, 15,000 guys used to come mm. to this event. Yeah, well, you've certainly done it. And uh, obviously, uh, folks can go to nationalmensconference.com, get signed up, get some more information. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful event, and it's coming up before you know it, in, in March. So now's the time to make plans. Joe Condit, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us this morning and sharing this wonderful news. God bless you both for the work you do. Thanks for having me on. God bless you, brother. All right, we're praying for the success of that uh, Godfather of them all, Catholic Men's mm-hmm. Conference in Cincinnati, March the 25th. Again, nationalmensconference.com. Get signed up and go. It's going to be fabulous. Absolutely. Hey, I got a little, I bet you didn't know that. I know I didn't. Uh, today is uh, marks the anniversary of the U.S. hockey team uh, beating the Soviet Union in the Miracle on Ice in 1980. You remember that? Remember oh, that? yeah. You the, watched that? Now, I want to see if I can come up with a few things that you didn't know about that. Tell me, both uh, Tim and Ron, okay. producer Tim in the studio as well, tell me if you knew this or not. The American, the Americans won the men's hockey gold in 1960, so 20 years before, thanks to a surprising semi-final uh, win over the defending champion Soviet Union in very much the same style. After that, the Soviets dominated and took home the next four gold medals, going 27-1-1 and outscoring their opponents 175-44, to making the 1980 victory a much bigger thing. So they the last time the Americans had won was 1960. The Soviets had absolutely dominated everything in between until we beat them in 1980. Now, let me tell me if you knew this. The U.S. head coach in 1980, Herb Brooks, was the last player cut from the 1960 team. I know that from the movie Miracle. Oh, you're a liar. All right, there you go. I'm just kidding. All right, so you knew that. You knew yeah. that. But can you imagine? So he's the head coach in 1980. He didn't get to go. Uh, he wasn't on the team in 60. He was actually the absolute last person cut. Now, tell me if you know this or knew this, Mr. Finn mm-hmm. and producer Tim. There was one cel- uh, one celebrity in attendance for that game. Only one. Okay. One celebrity in attendance for mm-hmm. that game. And there's a Toledo connection. It was Jamie really? Farr. Really? Jamie oh, Farr okay. was well, the only celebrity in attendance for that 1980 victory over the Soviet Union. One well-known person, MASH, was in their eighth season at that point. Uh, Jamie Farr was over there. He was uh, the sole celebrity in huh. attendance of wow. that game. 7,700 people there for that game. He was the sole uh, American celebrity at the game. Yeah, it amazes wow, me because cool. the Soviet Union had won like eleven to nothing in the. Uh, oh yeah, they had an exhibition previously. So oh yeah, just no a couple months before. Shot. Yeah, they uh-huh. they had annihilated us. But I thought that was crazy. Yeah. If you're going to have one celebrity, why wouldn't it be Jamie Farr? Yeah, there absolutely. you go. There's a little. I bet you didn't know that. I know I didn't. On this anniversary of the miracle on ice, and now for heroes of the faith. And today it's a uh, blessed uh, Bernard, or maybe it's Bernard. Uh, Scamacha. Scamacha. S C A M M A C C A. Okay. Okay. Uh, you get the sense that perhaps um, he was born in Sicily or something like that. He was. In 1430, in Catania, Sicily, born to a wealthy and pious family. He was uh, well educated but spent a wild and dissolute youth. And during one of his revels, he received a leg wound in a duel. Sounds a little mm, bit like wow. someone else we know, yeah. right? Uh, but. Uh, he had this this uh, recovery time, which gave him time to think, and the young man realized he was headed in the wrong direction. As he was healed, 
Bernard renewed his life in the church and then joined the Dominicans in Catania mm. in 1452. He was noted for his charitable works and his life of repentance uh, for his earlier ways, his strict adherence to the rules of the order, and his devotion to the contemplation of Christ's passion, which would sometimes send him into ecstasies. Mm. He founded a hospital for the poor and really was known as a gifted preacher. He preferred to spend his time in the confessional and working as a spiritual director, and he had the gift of prophecy, and he used that gift to warn people to change their lives. He prophesied the date of his own death. Oh, wow. Legend says that when he walked in the gardens of his monastery, birds would come down to sing to him, Mm. but he would stop, or they would stop, when he went into prayer. So they didn't want to interrupt his prayer. Wow. Uh, once when a porter was sent to Bernard's room to fetch him, the man saw a bright light shining under the door. And when he peeked in, he saw a beautiful child who was shining with light and holding a book from which Bernard was reading. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my. So, yeah, he died of natural causes in 1487. He, he was born in 1430. He was uh, beatified by uh, Pope Leo the Twelfth. So uh, a blessed, blessed uh, Bernard uh, Scamacha, <laughs> our hero Scamacha. of the faith today. How about that? Yeah, and, and I, I hate to say this, how base I am, but it makes me think of scotch. Scotchy, scotch, scotch. <laughs> but anyway, just incredible. And you love to hear these stories of people who have this communication with heavenly things mm-hmm. as just kind of a normal part of their everyday life. Right. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and so, birds singing until he prays. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ron. I love that. Blessed Bernard. Pray Pray for for us. us. We'll be right back with Deacon Dan. Welcome to Catechism for Today with Father Nicholas Weibel. Lessons for daily life from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. A Sunday school class had just been hearing about the parable of the prodigal son. Now, said the Sunday school teacher, who was not glad to know of the prodigal's return. Please, sir, replies one boy, the fatted calf. Now, what does the catechism say about this? Paragraph 2099. It is right to offer sacrifice to God as a sign of adoration and gratitude, supplication and communion. Every action done so as to cling to God in communion of holiness and thus achieve blessings, is a true sacrifice. Paragraph 2100. Outward sacrifice, to be genuine, must be the expression of spiritual sacrifice. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. The prophets of the Old Covenant often denounced sacrifices that were not from the heart or not coupled with love of neighbor. Jesus recalls the words of the prophet Hosea, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. The only perfect sacrifice is the one that Christ offered on the cross as a total offering to the Father's love and for our salvation. By uniting ourselves with his sacrifice, we can make our living a sacrifice to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. Well, thank you so much for joining us. 34 degrees right now. We still have some light freezing rain in most areas. We do have some snow as you get up into Michigan, and uh, we've got kind of a mixed bag in between. So uh, extra caution uh, today. It's mostly rain, so uh, uh, just be aware that... uh, it could be a kind of a slow go. You definitely want to take your time slowing down and stopping at intersections. Yeah, be careful today. A whole lot happening, obviously, Ash Wednesday services on in all the parishes and that kind of thing. So make it if you can, but be very, very careful going and coming. And then a whole lot happening as Lent gets started as well. We hope mm-hmm. to see uh, some of you as we hit the road for fish fries. We'll be at uh, Most Blessed Sacrament in Toledo uh, this Friday. So hope to see mm-hmm. some of you there. We're also looking for opportunities to go to others. If you're holding one, if you're responsible for a fish fry, reach out to us. Maybe we've, we've still got a couple Fridays open That's we'd right. like to That's fill. Right. So 
So, yeah, most blessed sacrament this week. And next week, I believe, uh, we're going to be uh, going out to St. Patrick Bryan. Yeah, going out to Bryan, Ohio. That's mm-hmm. going to be fun. So. so we're going to come to your fish fry? It depends. Are you going to let us know? It's you up to invite you. Us? <laughs> we only come when we're invited. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, let's know what invites us. Then yeah. we might just show we'll up. Show anyway. up anyhow, yeah. And our word for today on this on this Ash Wednesday, on this Wednesday, February the 22nd, our word, words for today, return to me, return to me, our words for today. Here to talk about it, the one, the only, Deacon Dan Brer. Deacon Dan, can't wait to hear your thoughts on these, our first readings as we get started with Lent on this Ash Wednesday. And our words for today, return to me. Good morning, Ryan, Dave. Good Happy morning. Happy Ash Wednesday. To you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Got up this morning to go down to, to Bowling Green. To We had a 7 a.m. Um, ash service on campus, and um, it was kind of appropriate that it was raining and mm. dark and gloomy outside. You know, it's kind of what you want Ash Wednesday to look like, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, and I tried to, to, to talk a little bit about how it's kind of intended to be a joyful time of year, it's joyful in a different way, joyful in that it's going to bring us closer to, to God. Mm. Um but the, these uh, these words for the day returned to me. Um, I, the first thing that made me think of was Saint Benedict. Um, he had a, a quote loosely um, translated as saying that Lent gives us the opportunity to live our lives exactly like we should have been living them all year long. Mm, amen. Um, and you know, so it sort of it brings us back. So um, I, one reflection that I have on this is if I were to say to you uh, that tonight I'm going to return to Toledo. Mm. then the assumption would be that I was somewhere else. <laughs> right. So, you know, <laughs> I was in South Bend, I was in Denver, and I'm going to return to Toledo. Um, so when we hear God saying through the prophet Joel, return to me, the assumption is that we were somewhere else first, that we have to come back to God. And so it begs the question, kind of, where are we? Where were we? And I think that that, um, we can kind of think of that in terms of we tend to get too much into ourselves, we pay a lot of attention to the world, we pay a lot of attention to our own needs, and sometimes we get so caught up in that that we break our connection with God along the way. And uh, I was reminded of that this last week in praying the Liturgy of the Hours. There was one of the daytime prayers was uh, included a reading from the prophet Baruch, and that reading said, your hearts have been disposed to stray from God. Mm-hmm. And he urges us in that reading to seek him. So disposed to pray to stray from God. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we stray from God, if we pay too much attention to ourselves and to the world, then it's no wonder that the prophet Joel today is going to say, return to me, to go back to God where we started. And the other thing that, that Prophet Joel says today is he says, rend your heart and not your garment. Mm. It's an interesting word. I mean, rend means to tear. So um, you think of Jesus before the Sanhedrin, and when they get upset, they tear their garment. You know, it's an outward way of showing anger or frustration or whatever. And what what Prophet Joel is saying is it isn't the outward here that God really wants. He wants the inward. So don't tear your garments. Tear your heart. Carry your heart open and let God in it is a way to return to him. And so Jesus in the gospel today gives us that recipe, those three pillars of Lent. And, you know, it, I love the fact that in the wisdom of the Church, we read these exact same readings every year. Mm. And we just keep going back to them because um, the Church really wants to sort of pound them over our heads and remind us that it's all about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. You know, those three pieces are always going to be part of this Lenten experience. And the one I, I, I focused on uh, most, I think, for this year for Lent is the idea of fasting. Um, you know, Cardinal Dolan, on his weekly program last week, he said his parishioners came to him and said, Cardinal, we'd really like for you to help us this year in our Lenten journey to share with us in our prayer and fasting. And he said, yeah, I will be happy to do that. I'll do the praying and you do the fasting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love the man. But, but you know, he's right. It, that's the hardest part. Mm. Um, sometimes, you know, saying an additional prayer or going to Mass or giving a few extra dollars in the collection plate, that's not always that hard to do. Mm. But the fasting is. Mm. And we live in this modern culture that says, you know, it's old-fashioned to give up things. You know, just you used to give up chocolate when we were kids. Don't do that anymore. Just do something nice for someone. Right. 
Well, yeah, I mean, doing something nice is good. And as my wife reminds me, that's what almsgiving is all about. Mm. But the fasting is actually setting aside and saying, no, there's some things that, that I just should be giving up as a sacrifice. And there's one word, I think, in the gospel today that is key to this. Jesus says, when you fast, do not look gloomy. Let me stop for a second. What's the first word of that sentence? When. Right. When you fast. He doesn't say, if you want to fast. In the event that you choose to fast, Mm. he doesn't give us an option. He says, when you fast. He's assuming we're going to do that during Lent. And so we give up something as a sacrifice, um, certainly as a way to deny ourselves of something, and teaching us that uh, we really need God and not everything else in our lives, that we need to be totally dependent on Him. And I think that every time we, we go to, let's suppose you give up television for Lent, every time that you go to turn on the TV and you think, oh, I gave up TV for Lent, then that reminds you, oh, it is Lent, mm-hmm. and that this is the whole point here is to bring me closer to God, to change my heart, and so that fasting can help us to get closer to Him. And so whatever that is, giving up chocolate, giving up television, don't give up radio, right? Yeah, um, right. <laughs> <giving> up... <laughs> At least not morning radio. <laughs> no, not morning radio. Um, Netflix, social media, alcohol, anything that we don't really need, but we kind of tend to, to gravitate to them anyway. You know, St. Thomas Aquinas said, God punishes us by letting us have the things we want. Mm. You know, that's kind of, that's pretty deep. I mean, the idea is you got this bag of chips sitting on the counter, and you said, I'd really like to eat those. I want those. And you think, yeah, I really shouldn't do that. You eat the bag of chips, and what do you do? You get sick because you ate the whole mm-hmm. bag of chips. It is its own punishment. So when we go after the things that God doesn't really want us to have, it's going to be its own punishment. And so when I see that those words return to me, it's a reminder to me to deny ourselves, put God back in the center. And along the way, when we do this fasting, we actually might establish some new habits that will continue long after Lent is over. Hmm. Boy, Deacon Dan, I'm so glad uh, that you know we have you on Wednesdays. What a great way to, to begin Lent and, and uh, to really celebrate Ash Wednesday. Thank you for that great reflection. You're welcome. I was so excited to be able to do Ash Wednesday today. What a, what a divine providence kicking in here. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Deacon Dan, praying for you during this Lenten season, you and your family. Uh, and thank you. We look forward to being with you each Wednesday going forward as we continue our preparation for Easter. Thank you. You too.